board meeting of the Board of Trustees. It is Thursday, August 24th, and it is five o'clock, and I'm calling this meeting to order. We will now do a roll call of attendance. Trustee Canova, absent. Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman, here. Trustee Muirhead, here. Trustee Ratterman, here. Trustee Ryan, absent. And I am here, so we have five here. Uh, and student trustee Valdez. Here. Thank you. Just um, for an announcement, per the just cause exemption allowed in government code 54953, trustee Muirhead will be attending this board meeting via Zoom. We will now go to the introduction of our interpreter. <clears throat> Good evening, board. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Angélica Benítez, mi compañera Verónica Adams y yo vamos a ser las intérpretes en español de esta noche. Bienvenidos a la reunión de la mesa directiva. Esta reunión está siendo transmitida en el canal en español de Zoom. Para escuchar esta sesión en español, oprima el botón que dice interpretación en su pantalla y seleccione el lenguaje de español. En este menú también podrá seleccionar la, seleccionar la opción de silenciar el audio original en inglés. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now have our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by one of our teachers, Brad Bedell. Please stand. Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Our district mission and vision statements will now be read by Trustee Lieberman. The mission of Santa Clara Unified School District is to provide equitable, engaging, and innovative educational experiences so that each student thrives in a global society. Graduates of Santa Clara Unified School District are resilient, future-ready, lifelong learners who think critically, solve problems collaboratively, and are prepared to thrive in a global society. Thank you, Trustee Lieberman. Now we need to review and accept the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Roderman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, every vote will be roll call as Trustee uh, Muirhead is per participating via Zoom. Trustee Canova, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman. Yes. Trustee Muirhead. Yes. Trustee Ratterman. Yes. Trustee Ryan, absent. I vote yes. And student trustee Valdez? Yes. Yes. So that passes six to zero with um, trustee Ryan being absent and trustee Valdez also voting yes. I will now read the guidelines on public comment for at a board meeting. Prior to that, I want to just state, I know we have some high interest items that the capacity of this room is 100. If it gets too full, we please follow the directions of the security and you may wait outside or and participate on Zoom um, if you do not want to wait outside. We will have a recess if we exceed the capacity of 100 and to allow us to reset the room so that we can stay within the guidelines of the fire marshal. Um, as far our um, guidelines for our for public comment. The Board of Trustees has a policy on civility. Policy 1310.1 on civility states, this policy promotes mutual respect, civility, and orderly conduct among district employees, parents, and the public. This policy is not intended to deprive any person of his or her right to freedom of expression, but only to maintain to the extent possible and reasonable a safe harassment free workplace for our students and staff. In the interest of presenting district employees as positive role models to the children of this district, as well as the community, SUSD encourages positive communication and discourages volatile, hostile, or aggressive actions. This district seeks the public's cooperation with this endeavor. We are now excited to have three presentations from some committees that have been working very hard over the past um, two years, I believe. Um, 
how this will work. I just want to make sure that um, everyone has the correct expectations. We're first going to listen to all three presentations. After that, then we will allow for board to comment on the presentations. And then if I get any slips, we will go out to public comment on the presentations. I know that the board is going to be very excited and want to wax eloquent about these presentations. And we want to make sure that all the presentations are able to be presented in a, in a timely manner so that those who have um, obligations they need to get to may do so. Um, so I will now turn the time over to Dr. Waddell. Thank you, President Fairchild. Uh, as you said, we were truly fortunate last year and in some cases beyond to have a number of district-wide joint committees underway addressing a number of critical issues to the district. This evening, we are uh, pleased to be able to hear reports from three of these committees who have made recommendations which will help to guide our work over the course of the coming year and beyond. I want to extend a huge uh, thanks to the many parents, community members, students, and staff who served on these committees and are here this evening to share their process and recommendations. I'll turn it over now to Chief Academic and Innovation Officer Stan to introduce the committees. Thank you, Dr. Waddell, and good evening, board. Um, it is my pleasure tonight to introduce to the board and the public the culmination of work of three committees launched by the district in the past two years. These committees are the Superintendent's Committee on School Climate and Culture, the Equity and Social Justice Committee, and the Environmental Literacy and Sustainability Committee. As Dr. Waddell stated, each committee is composed of students, parents, community members, teachers, administrators, other staff, and members of the board. As their names indicate, these committees have distinct areas of focus, which will be shared in their presentations. However, I think it's also important to point out what they have in common. These committee members who volunteered many hours of their time over many months of meetings, regardless of their roles, share a passion and commitment to the betterment of our school district. They know and believe that our district can be more welcoming and inclusive, especially for those most marginalized. They know and believe that our district can better meet the learning and wellness needs of our students, regardless of their background or identity. And they know and believe that student well being is directly connected to the well being of our communities and our planet. It is in that spirit of fostering the well being and connectedness of every child and every adult in Santa Clara Unified that I introduce the work of these committees this evening. I'd like to invite Dr. Carrillo to come up with uh, and introduce her co-presenters for the first uh, presentation, um, which I believe is the Superintendent's Committee on School Climate and Culture. The wrong one. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Stam. Good evening. My name is Brenda Carrillo, and I'm the Director for Student Services, and I'm joined tonight by two members of our Superintendent's Committee on School Climate and Culture to share um, outcomes and recommendations that are focused on helping to increase student engagement and student success. My co-presenters for tonight are uh, Luis Valdez, who is a MEC student and also a student trustee, as well as Mirna Zendejas, who is a district social worker and, and co-facilitated, helped to co-facilitate this committee. We also have members of our committee in the audience who are here to support our presentation tonight. <clears throat> the Superintendent's Committee on School Climate and Culture was launched in the spring of last year as a means of examining what we could do to deepen our efforts to ensure, as Mr. Stam said, that every student comes to school and, and experiences a safe and welcoming school environment. We had seen an increase in student risk factors, including poor attendance and engagement, as well as increases in mental health needs. And these trends really called um, upon us for innovative responses and that those responses be informed by our community to support student well being. And so our committee was charged with assessing student wellness using a whole child lens and to make recommendations to improve positive school climate and culture across the district. To help us better understand the needs of our community, an initial survey was sent out to families in November of 2021. And I'm happy to share that we had approximately 231 responses to our survey, which asked questions about their interest in school climate and culture, as well as what topics they believe that this committee could prioritize. 
And so this information assisted us with planning for the committee itself. Invitations were sent in December of 2021 and January of 2022, and we received just over 50 applications. Each of those applications was reviewed to ensure diversity of roles, positions, schools, et cetera. Our interest really was to have a representation of our community. We also asked each secondary school to designate a student representative to ensure student voice in informing this work. And we actually had some schools that said multiple students um, instead of having one representative. We had uh, 39 members of this committee and 20 of those were students. One of the things that isn't reflected up on this slide is that we actually had nine uh, middle school students. So that somehow got left off of our um, slide there, but it's very important. Um, we also had two trustees, President Fairchild was part of our committee as well as Vice President Lieberman. And so that was really helpful to, to us. And so based on our process, the committee was ultimately made up of a dynamic, diverse and youth-centered group who all brought really important perspectives to our work. So once our committee was selected, the group began to engage in a three-phased approach to meeting their, their charge. And in the first phase, really the group was looking at what is uh, school climate and what is school culture and how do we build common ground across these different topics. And as part of this initial conversation, there was an inventorying of what we are already doing well in our district. What are the strengths that we already have and that we see, especially from our student perspective? And then what are the areas that we need to lean into? Where do we need to be doing more work? As the group transitioned into phase two of the work, we started to look more closely at some of those initial groupings and to an, uh, do an analysis and start to refine an affinity group, all of those different ideas into some some buckets to help us to think about what are the themes that were emerging. And then in the third phase of the work, we looked at data to help us to determine which of these themes are actually supported by data. Where do we know that we have um, areas of growth and where do we potentially need more information to identify those, those areas? It's important on this slide to highlight that it's, it's fairly basic in its uh, presentation of the work that happened in the committee, but um, for those of us that were on the committee, this was a very iterative process with many different conversations and refinements of, of the work. And you can certainly read about the full details of the three-phased approach in the report that accompanied this presentation. So at this point, I'm going to um, hand uh, the presentation over to uh, Luis, who's gonna talk about the uh, committee strengths and challenges. Thank you very much. So when in this committee, I definitely experienced a lot of warm messages that I was able to receive with not only my fellow high schoolers, but also the middle schoolers. So some of the highlights that we did find was that there were high levels of committee engagement that we did see with student voice. And again, not only with high school, but also with middle school. And on top of that, we also did see that the decision making and recommendations were based off broad spectrums of data that we did receive. And as a result of that, <laughs> we were able to make our decisions from not only collectively seeking and breaking down the data, but also from recommendations that were not on there. And on top of that, we made committed decisions on the needs of the most vulnerable populations within Santa Clara Unified. And with some of our challenges being that school climate and culture, the data was perhaps not leaning towards the elementary schools and perhaps lacking in that area. And as a result, we decided that that was going to be one of our focuses for later on. On top of that, the scope of the data for students could have been considered overwhelming for some. And on top of that, the alignment of work that we had with the other district committees perhaps was not on par to what we wanted to see out of engagement from all three. Okay, so for this slide, we are talking about how we believe that all students, especially those who have been historically marginalized and underserved, would benefit from feeling that adults and peers in their school care about them on an individual learn on an individual level as well as a learning level. So some of the key recommendations that we will highlight here just briefly is that we want to increase school connectedness as well as align professional learning. And lastly, we want to target mental health support. And now I will pass it. Thank you, Luis. 
Our School Climate and Culture Committee worked diligently to ensure that the recommendation, recommendations we're presenting tonight will, were, were well researched and supported by our district data. Earlier in our process, or in our presentation, Dr. Carrillo shared the first three phases of our committee's process. And our fourth and last phase was developing our final recommendations. Although we are only sharing a snapshot of the recommendations tonight, we have a full report that captures our committee's journey and it includes detailed information regarding our recommendations. It is encouraging to know that our district is already implementing some of the recommended strategies and that there are also new examples of things that we can still do. Our first recommendation is increased school connectedness. Our data dive found a significant discrepancy between teachers and students' feelings of connectedness. One strategy we identified to support this recommendation is for schools to create space and opportunities for students and staff to work collaboratively on improving school climate, culture, and relationships. Our second recommendation is aligned professional learning. Our data continued to show the importance of staff and student relationships and the discrepancy between adults and students' perspectives of having a caring adult on campus. Our committee recognized the opportunity for our district to provide professional learning that fosters strong relationships that cultivates a healthy school climate and culture. Some professional learning topics include addressing unconscious bias, raising awareness of gender diversity, and implementing restorative practices. Lastly, targeted mental health supports is one of the key recommendations. We know that many youth face mental health challenges and our district is no exception. Reviewing our district data, we found that some of our most vulnerable student groups reported high rates of mental health challenges. We are fortunate to be in a district that values mental health and has a robust menu of services for students in this area. Our committee has identified a few additional ways to continue to enhance this recommendation. For example, by incorporating more social emotional learning instruction in classrooms instead of only in designated spaces on campus. It is important to mention that two reoccurring themes are present in all our recommendations. One is the importance of students feeling connected with adults on campus, and the second is how crucial it is to capture student voice on topics such as school connectedness and mental health that go beyond just surveys. And with that, I pass it on to Dr. Curio for our next steps. Thank you, Mirna. So in addition to the recommendations that you've heard um, this evening, the committee also proposed three next steps. The first is to um, align recommendations across the various committees. As you heard earlier, we found that there was overlap between some of these themes. And so we think that there's opportunities to maintain the integrity of the various recommendations while also starting to braid those recommendations together. The second item speaks to sharing of the recommendations with key leaders, and we've already begun to do this work. For example, we've shared this, uh, these recommendations with our professional learning department as well as our human resources department. And finally, the committee was very clear that we need to find ways to continue to creatively engage students and families in our community, especially those families and communities that are most marginalized in these, in these conversations. I think as we continue with our next presentation on the Equity and Social Justice Committee, it'll become clearer how, these, how this integration could potentially happen. In summary, we want to, um, on behalf of the facilitators of this committee, we want to thank our committee members who gave incredible amounts of time and energy and effort to this work. And we are so appreciative of them and could not have done this with, without them. So thank you. Thank you. As a reminder to those who have who arrived after the start of the first presentation, we are going to listen to all three presentations and then we will have board comment and public comment. So our next presentation is, presentation is on equity and social justice. Okay. Well, on behalf of the Equity and Social Justice Committee, we're happy to be here tonight to share highlights of our committee's work over the last two years. Uh, my committee co-presenters for tonight are Mr. Koshik Roy, who is a district parent, and Asher Dubin, who is a student at Santa Clara High School. We also have a group of committee members here in the back who are here to support our presentation. <laughs> Next slide. 
So two years ago, the district received an invitation from the United Teachers of Santa Clara, as well as the California School Employees Association to deepen and align our equity e efforts to the development of a district-wide equity and social justice committee. Um, the invitation was very powerful as it represented an intentional partnership at a time when we were seeing issues related to loss of school time because of the pandemic, we were seeing increased mental health issues as well as poor academic outcomes, especially for students that we already knew were marginalized. And so the timing of this invitation, I thought, um, was very, very powerful. The committee launched in fall of 2021 and was guided by a small advisory group that was made up by UTSC, CSEA, as well as district leaders. And we all worked together on designing the committee and developing the, the committee as well. Next, next slide, please. The committee's charge was actually quite ambitious and it included reviewing data and uh, current definitions around equity it involved developing an equity framework and then monitoring and measuring the impact of this equity framework. And initially we anticipated that with the two year commitment, we'd be able to fully address all aspects of our charge. However, we quickly learned via our own experience as a committee, as well as from talking from other um, districts and teams that were doing this work that equity work is very, very challenging. It's very dynamic, it is intensive and it takes time. We are act, our research actually indicated that the scope of work can take upwards to five to seven years to really begin to establish. However, with this being said, we are really proud of the work that we accomplished and the work that we accomplished over these last two years and plan to, to continue. We were able to examine data, we confirmed our equity definitions, and we did develop a draft equity framework. I think also it's important to, to share that we were able to model how you bring a gr diverse group of people together across our community with very different viewpoints and very different life experiences and to create a common vision to move equity forward in our district. This slide uh, represents just a snapshot of notable highlights of the committee's work over the last two years. and. Um, even though these highlights are represented in a linear fashion with set dates and, and actions that you can see, the process was actually very cyclical in nature. For example, we had initial members that joined the committee in fall of 2021. However, in the summer of 2022, we had to add new members due to vacancies um, on our committee. So we had to pause there and make sure that these new committee members were brought on and that they felt safe and welcomed to be able to be to do this this very difficult work. We also engaged in professional learning throughout the life of the committee because we wanted to use that information to help us as we were drafting and designing our equity framework. And you can see here that we did have some initial feedback sessions that occurred in April and May. And we do again plan to continue these feedback sessions beyond what you see on the timeline. Um, I do want to say that the committee sees this work as a starting point to continue with intentionality um, to address the equity gaps that continue to persist in our district. So again, this is just a snapshot of the work that has already occurred. And certainly there's excitement in continuing um, these efforts. And so now I'm going to pass it on to our next speaker, Mr. Roy. Next slide, please. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. You heard from Brenda about why the committee was started, an overview of what we did the last two years, and more about how we found committee members. I'll be talking to you about the process of our work. Some people might think it's easy to put together an equity framework, just copy paste SCUSD on another district's equity framework and move on. It takes much more than that to do equity pro work properly. And the work is never done. It's an iterative process to make progress. After all, if this were easy, we would have already solved it. So thank you to the district for investing time for our committee to start this work. The first phase is building trust. A team only moves at the speed of trust. Trust is also a prerequisite for really difficult and vulnerable conversations. Our committee reflects a diverse set of community members, perspectives, and lived experiences. We spent the first few meetings introducing ourselves, our backgrounds, and our goals to build that trust. I'm the child of immigrants, part of a mixed race family, and raising two kids, including one with disabilities. The challenges I face as a child and see as a parent shape my views on equity and my input to this community. With trust, the community moved on to deep learning. 
Our lived experiences teach us about equity, but there's so much more to learn. Did you know Brown versus Board of Education happened in 1954, but it took 21 more years for IDEA to try to end separate but equal for students with disabilities? Did you know the federal government promised in 1975 to pay for 40% of the cost of education for students with disabilities, but now pays for less than 15%? Without knowing the facts, we can't begin to take steps to change the system. We were lucky enough to have amazing teachers guide us through a series of learning exercises to gain a common understanding of how inequity in many ways has been baked into the public school system. We also met with SCUSD stakeholders and reviewed data about students in the district to better understand our unique needs in Santa Clara. Once we had built trust and learned about the system, we were finally able to make progress, researching existing frameworks and learning about from other school districts who have already started on this journey. Our key breakthrough came during a Saturday sermon where through brainstorming and collaboration, we hashed out an initial framework draft. Next slide, please. Before I drill down into the framework, I wanted to share what we learned from community free feedback. We met with approximately 200 people across the district through a series of meetings with community members and administrators. Four themes came out as top priorities, student voice, student support, community partnerships, and professional learning. We believe these should be the areas of focus for the next year. You can see the emphasis on connecting with our key stakeholders, students, and the community. Next slide, please. Um, yes. I also wanted to call attention to a few highlights and challenges from our work. I've talked about how trust and collaboration was critical to our efforts. Our success also required input from many diverse voices within the committee and from community feedback. We learned a great deal from multiple other teams building equity frameworks, including our neighbors at Mission College. On the other hand, we recognize that these discussions are hard. Equity work gets to the core of our beliefs and our vulnerabilities, and it takes full commitment to make any headway. Next slide, please. This brings us to our key deliverable, the equity framework. What you see here is a framework distilled down to the most accessible form. The details are available in the report provided to the board. There are eight focus areas grouped into three domains. The teaching and learning domain consists of professional learning and instruction and assessment. For structural change, we have recruitment and retention of staff, accountability, and resource allocation. Finally, whole child, whole community focuses on student voice, student supports, and family and community partnerships. For each focus area, we crafted a belief statement to center our thoughts and shape our next steps. The one shown here is for student voice, one of the highest priorities. Then for each focus area, we classified action items into three categories, system changes, adults in the district, and students. The equity framework in the board report reflect the committee's body of work, but this doesn't mean we are done. What we do with this and where we go together next to the district is what will bring this work to fruition. Now I'll hand it over to Asher to share our recommendations and provide an invaluable student voice. Thanks. Thank you, Koshik and Brenda. My name is Asher Dubin and I'm a senior at Santa Clara High School. I'm going to be going over the recommendations that our committee has for the board. So number one is to develop district-wide shared understanding of the equity framework. Our hope is to make this framework accessible to all members of the community, emphasizing the importance of knowing and understanding what it means. Second, we hope that the executive cabinet will adopt our equity framework as a tool for policy, practice, and progress. Third, we would like to develop student, staff, and parent capacity, knowledge, and advocacy for equity leadership through professional learning and coaching. And finally, number four, for the 2023-24 school year, we would like to focus on student voice by developing a student engagement plan informed by data and lived experiences of students. At school, I've seen firsthand how situations that honor a student's ethnicity, specific abilities, et cetera, whether one-on-one -on -one in the classroom or in an organized event, truly improve their experience and engagement. For example, at my school, Santa Clara High School, the students form communities through their cultural clubs, one of these is FASA, the Filipino American Student Asso Association, who is given the opportunity to present traditional dances to the whole student body during the school day. This is a great example of how student voice can demonstrate the value of diversity in our district. Last year during Ramadan, our school's Muslim Student Association worked with our, my teacher, Mr. Muhammad, to designate his classroom as a food-free zone during lunch so that Muslim students who were fasting could feel like they were a welcome part of the community. It would be great to get feedback from students about the lasting impact of these supports and use moments like this as a model for our district's practices. Next slide, please. I would like to, quote, I would like to close with a quote from Seymour Saracen. 
to put it as succinctly as possible, if you want to change and improve the climate and outcomes of schooling, both for students and teachers, there are features of the school culture that have to be changed. And if they are not changed, your well-intentioned efforts will be defeated. Most importantly, the work that we have done is just the beginning. After two years of working together, we are still in an emerging state. And to, to truly make a difference, we must continue our efforts and remain accountable for our practices in and outside of the school setting. It was personally, it was important for me to join this committee as it directly impacts my peers and their academic success. The issues that we are facing remain evident in our schools and we must work together to improve for the future. Our goal is to engage more students in this process as developing this framework with the inclusion of student voice is necessary. In such a diverse area, it is crucial to be ahead of the curve with equitable practices, and these are best measured by talking to the students, the ones who see our work firsthand. We hope to further include students by using activities and demonstrations to show the value of this type of work, as well as continuously gathering their input as changes are made. Finally, I would like to thank all of the other members of our committee uh, because this would not be possible without them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next committee report will be the Environmental Literacy and Sustainability Committee. Good evening, can you hear me? All right. Good evening, board members and members of the public. I'm Kim Hunter. I'm the environmental TOSA for the district. And I'm here with um, co-chair um, and co-presenter, Michelle Ryan, um, director of facilities and planning and um, members of Team React from Santa Clara High School. Um, there's three student presenters with me, uh, Devin Wong, Anushka Rala, uh, Ryan Raphael, and then we have three supporting members too here um, from Team React, Sanjana Yellery, Taylor Wong, and Ka Kayla Zadeh. Um, and Brad has been our supporter um, and sponsor. So I'm gonna start off with some um, background and com committee purpose here. Uh, the board passed, um, it first began in spring 2022 um, with the board passing the water conservation and climate change board resolutions we formed um, as a response to the board policies um, with, and is charged to, uh, with developing indicators of progress in key areas of district environmental sustainability, monitoring and evaluating and reporting the district's progress to the board and creating a plan to identify recommended actions that implement environmental and climate action across our schools, campuses, curriculum, community and culture. We seek as a community, as a committee to educate and engage students through an equitably accessed TK-12 environmental literacy program, including curriculum, field trips, clubs, internships, community partnerships, and leadership opportunities. We work with all partners to transform our schools and district offices into models of environmental sustainability and to seek or inspire Santa Clara Unified Schools to take environmental action um, environmental and climate action. So in our first year, we reached out. Oh, can we move? Thanks. Um, in our first year, we reached out to known advocates, students, teachers, staff, and community members that were involved in writing the climate change board resolution in prior years in 2020 to 2022. We partnered with 10 Strands, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to strengthen the partnerships and strategies that will bring environmental literacy to all California students in grades TK through 12. And at the end of last year's school year, we sent out an interest survey to all staff, students, and families. We now have over 60 individuals who are interested in joining our committee last, next this year. Um, and our ideal goal is to have one representative of every school um, and from every department in the district. The committee will be meeting to finalize recruitment strategy and outreach as well as meeting times. So next slide. 
So here's our timeline and phases over the last year. So we began with a foundation um, for the committee work with a scope and purpose last January. And then we worked with on a baseline assessment tool in collaboration with 10 strands who facilitated some site walks to seven of our schools from March to June, 2023. And following the site surveys, we reviewed the data collected and drafted the environmental and climate action baseline assessment along with the campus sustainability dashboard. Now let's take a moment to look at the highlights and challenges that we've had throughout this past year. So through our productive partnership with 10 Strands, the committee has established a set of shared goals and objectives to implement in the present and in the future. The committee has also created outreach materials such as Earth Day curriculum and activities to help raise awareness throughout the district. This has also helped us recruit more members, such as myself, a high school student, to the committee. Now, the committee has also developed the Environmental and Climate Action Baseline Assessment, which has been implemented throughout the district. This has helped us create the, the, initial, so the initial support of the Environmental and Climate Action Plan. Furthermore, the committee has also supported the development of the Campus Sustainability Dashboard. Now, our biggest challenge thus far has been the lack of a dedicated district lead. This has meant a lack of time and dedication to this work, as well as a distribution, a wide distribution of responsibilities across members of the committee. So 10 strands has helped us in various ways throughout this past year. They've helped create agendas for our meetings, and they've also provided us with important information for various members of our committee. In conjunction with 10 strands, we have conducted seven baseline assessments throughout several schools in our district. These assessments consisted of touring campuses and also asking, uh, interviewing students and teachers to get a better understanding of the environmental situation at a site level. We have also helped design the um, campus sustainability dashboard, which we will be using to provide up-to-date information regarding the energy and water usage at the district, and this will help us increase our efficiency in the future. Now here are our baseline assessment report findings. First of all, we recognize that there are a variety of ongoing efforts currently underway across the district in order to promote environmental sustainability as well as to promote environmental literacy. However, we are concerned that oftentimes these efforts are uneven and overly dependent on teacher and principal interests in order to take action, which in the end undermines our efforts and oftentimes causes our efforts to not yet be in a systemic manner. Furthermore, certain factors such as difference in campus size as well as age also have an impact on sustainability. What we believe is that we need more visibility and voice, more of a campaign to ensure that we are increasing environmental awareness towards students, staff, and families so that they're able to understand exactly what our environmental and sustainable goals and efforts are so that they can adopt greener practices themselves. Furthermore, we believe this is the best way to ensure that SUSD is a green district. And in order to make this happen, it is highly necessary for district-wide leadership and coordination. Such Some results of such efforts also include the water conservation as well as energy conservation, such as those in Pomeroy, um, Pomeroy the district office, Wilcox, Scott Lane, Pomeroy, Washington Open, and Central Park, where they were able to install tolerant drought, drought tolerant gardens, which were extremely helpful in promoting sustainability across the community. Now I'll pass it off. The district is creating an SUSD campus sustainability dashboard. The dashboard will show the annual water, electricity, and gas usage by the district. The purpose of the campus sustainability dashboard is to support making facilities and operations data, energy, water, and waste, a transparent and accessible for use by multiple stakeholders for awareness, advocacy, and action. The dashboard is a comprehensive tool that reinforces the goals of utilizing the campus as a living laboratory and supports efforts of ongoing benchmarking. Applying for sustainability awards programs and for tracking and monitoring progress on the environmental and climate action plans. When we launch the dashboard, we'll do an engagement activity and we'll be focusing on supporting initiatives to help students and staff reduce water use 
implement recycling and food waste over the course of the coming months in the school year. We hope this will become part of the educational curriculum in many educational strands. Some district teachers already have access to our solar production website, and this dashboard will be added available information for them. An additional resource that will be finalized this year by the committee is the District-Wide Environmental Climate Action Plan, or ECAP. An environmental action plan focuses specifically on catalyzing and implementing environmental and climate literacy and sustainability and climate resilient action across all aspects of our school community. The progress made in 22-23 was focused on vision and goal setting, and 22, 23, and 24 will be focused into further detail to outline the strategies and projects and to start implementing the plan. In order to help create the Environmental and Climate Action Plan, the district is reaching out to find representatives from each school site. The representatives will consist of staff, students, and community members. The committee will encourage existing and new green teams at school sites and also help to provide feedback for the Climate Action Plan and to help implement it this year and in all future years. The committee has completed a district-wide analysis over the eight, past eight months and will continue to use information gathered to create an implementable short-term and long-term environmental and climate action plan for the district. We are striving to create a self-sustaining green teams at schools and create the district-wide environmentally conscious community. Thank you. Thank you to all of the committees who just presented. It was a nice shot of positivity that I think we all needed. It was wonderful to hear about your work and the progress you have made. We will now um, start with um, any comments from the board on the presentation done by the School Climate and Culture Committee. We don't all have to comment, but if you have something you would like to say about that committee report, Uh, Trustee Gonzalez. So thank you all for the presentation. The time that it took to uh, to do the work, uh, I know it's uh, can be time consuming, and a lot of times you're not getting reimbursed for that. But uh, there's definitely things that we need here in Santa Clara Unified to to move us forward. Um, one of the things that was mentioned in the last presentation, but I think is is um, it would be part of all three is the data and how we measure some things that might be more. Uh, it's easier to measure gallons of water versus reconnectivity, but uh, I remember a few years ago when the LMI uh, was initiated, there was uh, some data that one of the districts presented as far as the connections that the districts had and how uh, the relationship between the more connected the, the districts and the school site levels were to certain programs and certain you know, district offices. It just made things work a little bit better sometimes uh, how you how you did that. and. I don't remember exactly the uh, what they were measuring, but I do remember that it, the more connected, whether it's students, whether it's staff, the collaboration that, that goes on between the different entities is really important. So, um, you know, how, how we measure or what we measure is, is gonna be important. And, you know, definitely, uh, I think that as, as far as moving to be a more, more data-driven and I know staff is, is, we have great staff, whether it's, you know, from our bus drivers to our teachers in the classrooms, how do, how do we measure some of the things that we've done in the past and, you know, look at what's working and what's not? I know that one of the questions that I usually ask is what other resources we have or do we need to implement, right? And um, having finite resources means that we have to make sure that we utilize them in, in the best way. So um, that's something that, you know, as far as staff and our committees to look at what's working and you know, implement those things that are working and expand and whatever maybe isn't working as well. It's, why isn't it working as well? Maybe we're not implementing the resources or providing a, the uh, the attention or fidelity that we need to, to do that. But um, thank you for your work. And uh, it's it's a lot of good things. And you know, where it's, as we move forward, it's gonna be very beneficial for us to use this data. So Trustee uh, Raderman uh, on the School Climate and Culture. Yeah, I'm gonna maybe, deviate just slightly um we had three really really good reports and um i was very impressed with the inclusion and one of the reasons i didn't 
jumped to talk earlier was because they didn't want to do it specifically per report. Um, we have also, and everybody has access to it online, the full reports. These were the synopsis reports. And they were very good. And thank goodness you didn't give full reports because we'd be here till because they're, they're, they're big. And the depth and the, the, the research and the work that went into those is truly impressive. And one of the things that I really appreciated was the inclusion of students, of te site teachers. So this wasn't the district on high coming in saying, you will do this. We, by, out, by doing the outreach, I think we're finding the true needs of our community, our educational community, our students, et cetera. And I think that's laudable and I really appreciate that. And so there is way too much here to digest in a short period of time, but I am very impressed with the report. I'm very grateful for all the work that everybody's put into this, and I think it's gonna move our district forward. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Ratterman. I, I get that it's difficult to separate them because they were overlapping and also well done, actually. So, Trustee Canova. Yeah, I just, and really, kind of following Andy's lead, just speaking to all of the presentations, everyone involved, we're so grateful for your involvement, but the presentations by students tonight are just incredible. I mean, I mean, just incredible. You know, as a board member, I, and I know everyone here agrees, you know, we're just so proud of you. We're so proud of um, your eloquence, your leadership, um, this is what this is all about. The, our future is our students. And we had a nice little example of a very bright future here tonight. So just, just very, very encouraging. Thank you so much. I know that Trustee Lieberman and I were able to be on the School Climate and Culture Committee and appreciated the conversations that we were able to have directly with students and their insights, which were often far greater than any of the adults in the room. It's, it's good to be humbled on occasion and sometimes every meeting. Do we have any uh, board? Oh, Trustee Ryan. Yes, um, yeah, I wanna thank all the committees for their work, um, really appreciated the reports. And, you know, I really, I mean, I hope we take forward that focus on student voice. I, I tell a lot of people one of the hardest votes that we ever had on this, as, as I've, I've had as a board member was one where, um, Student voice said one thing and the adults said a different thing and we didn't listen to the students. Um, and I don't wanna go back on what that vote was or what it was about, but I hope we can carry forward that focus on students and because students know what's going on in classrooms, in schools, and we really have to listen to them. We have to, that's why we're here is to serve students. And we really do need to prioritize that voice. So thank you to all the committees and their work. And I really, um, hoping we can really stay aligned to that student student focus. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any comments from the board specific to the presentation on equity and social justice? We've kind of hit all three. I'm going to get to the public comment um, or environmental literacy. Trustee Gonzalez. You know, equity and justice. I, I know that staff and districts have been doing things um, whether it's free busing, whether it was um, the uh, paying of SATs and uh, AP tests, certain things to to make sure that our underserved, maybe uh, under-resourced uh, students were 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 not seeing any any roadblocks, any any things that would limit them from uh, taking AP courses or taking tests or things of this sort. And I think there's been some movement, and I haven't seen the results recently, but as far as more. Uh, you know, students of color, as he, he these students uh, taking these these uh, tests. But um, so I would say that you know we take what we've done, expand on it, and learn from it, and see what has been working. Um, and uh, you know, if we're not getting as many or as much diverse, more diversity, let's say on our an SLI program, you know, how do we do that? How, how do we find ways to to implement things? Right. So things that we've been doing. I think you can always learn from what what's been working right at our different sites, and uh, definitely, uh, we I think there's been a lot of good work that's been done. How do you learn from that and uh, expand on it? And I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we're moving forward, and I think this this voice and the different voices that we've heard today, and we're part of the report, are are going to be important and in, in getting us there. Thank you, Trustee Gonzalez. We'll now go out to the Zoom as Trustee Muirhead has a comment. 
Hi, well, I mostly wanted to say awesome job on all three presentations. Um, I got to participate with um, one of the groups and I just found it um, so inspiring to see all of the different um, parts of our district from students to staff to consultants that we brought in um, all working together and, and working really well and working really hard. Um, I just thought that was wonderful. And I, and I think um, most of these committees I believe are gonna continue. And so I really appreciate that we've gotten this snapshot of so much really good, solid um, work and some great ideas and ways to move forward. And now we just, we need to be sure that we execute on this. That we haven't done all this work for nothing, that we actually um, pay attention to what's been said and take it in as part of our job as the board and, and superintendent, Dr. Waddell, that um, we really move forward with these recommendations. Thank you, Trustee Muirhead. Um, I think if anything, we've learned these first two weeks of school, how important the Equity and Social Justice Committee is and how we still have a lot of work to do. And so I am grateful that this committee is already in existence and that we can continue to move forward. Um, the last area that the board will address and then we'll go out to public comment, is there any sp comments specific to the Environmental Literacy and Sustainability Committee? Trustee Canova. I just really like that dashboard that was developed. That's really fantastic because it gives all of us as a community to to really monitor our stewardship in these areas. And when you think about our students and their careers and where they'll go, I mean, they're gonna go in so many directions. They won't necessarily stay here in the Valley. They'll go all over the country and the world. And they're gonna take that sense of stewardship into their own households, into the companies they work for and into their career tracks. So, you know, what is happening here in terms of our work in this area just really has a powerful impact really uh, uh, in ways we can't imagine. So uh, I would like the dashboard. I think that's really transparent and it really involves all of, all of us so we can see what we're doing and how we're actually performing. Trustee Gonzalez. I'll just ditto that. I know that uh, when, before we started our solar program, East Side Union High School District had a, a program that they started maybe about a year or two before us. And they, you would go to one of the schools and you would see the the capacity of their, or the, the, the uh, we got the generation of their solar panels. So I think when you measure things, right, you can see things, what's going on, whether, you know, you got to cut back on, on usage or, or maybe uh, fix a solar panel that might be broken or something for water. But I think it's always good to, to look at that and have that. If it's in your face a little bit more, then it's it's more uh, easier to sometimes to take action. So yeah, I think the dashboard is in, in, in tools like that are going to be beneficial for us to, to really take a look at that and, and uh, take action on what, what we need to do. Trustee Raderman. Yeah, you know, over the years, we've made quite a few attempts at environmental issues. We we put together a green committee uh, back in 2008, seven or eight, something like that, where we brought a lot of environmental experts in, adult environmental experts in. And actually, the, one of the first student loan programs that I run, programs that I remember, was the Sony Star program that ran at Wilcox. And those students did remarkable things. They were able to work with the school to turn the, the hall lights down and do, and, and they cut their energy use by close to 50%. The adult committee did succeed at one thing. It helped provide input where we did photovoltaics through the district in 2010. But I think now that we're engaging our students, uh, we may be able to see some real tangible uh, differences in what our district does environmentally uh, which I'm very excited about, and I hope that that, that uh, comes to fruition. So thank you for getting engaged, because I do believe the students are the secret to success. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Ratterman. I believe it, with the environmental and literacy and sustainability work that the students are dragging the adults along. I think we have seen that over and over again. They, we just need to work on keeping up. Okay, we will now go out to public comment. When your name is called, you will ha come to the podium. Make sure that the microphone is on. You, there is a button to push. Make sure the green light is on before you start speaking. You will have two minutes to speak. At the end of two minutes, please return to your seat. If you have any additional comments, you may email the board. 
Now we are taking comments right now only on the three presentations that were just given to the board. We'll take comments first on the presentation on school climate and culture. I have one slip, but if you would like to speak on that presentation, you may line up. Um, and this is a slip is for Lily Owen. All right. Good evening. Uh, thank you all. I was grateful for the chance to serve on the School Climate and Culture Committee. Um, and I just want to express my appreciation for the board in supporting that work, Dr. Carrillo and the other facilitators, um, as well as many of the committee members who I see in the room. Um, and as mentioned, a lot of our work was data driven. And so I just wanted to call out a couple specific data points that really were especially alarming for me. Um, I work as a paraeducator. I'm also a parent of two students in the district. Um, and I volunteer as um, with the Trevor Project on their suicide hotline. And so all of those things contribute to my reaction to the data. But one of the data points that we looked at said that the desire for self-harm um, for all students was anywhere from like five to 22%. That was the breakout along racial lines. But for LGBTQ students, it was like 60 to 80%. And that overall, one fifth, two fifths of students declared that they feel unsafe at school. But for our LGBTQ students, it was two fifths to four fifths. That's a staggering number of students who feel unsafe at school. And there's been a lot of buzz in our district about safety. We've also been talking tonight about student voice, and these are examples of student voice, and these are students letting us know how they feel at school. And so I feel feeling safe at school is a prerequisite to learning. And I hope that we continue to take those um, feelings seriously. And thank you, and thanks to the committee. Thank you so much for your comments. Or is there anyone else who would like to speak on the presentation on school climate and culture? Are there any comments in the Zoom? Okay, we will now go. Oh, thank you. Good evening, can you hear me? Good evening, I'm Crystal Woodward. I'm a teacher at Wilson. I'm also the chair of UTSC's um, Equity and Human Rights Committee. And I also was a member of the School Climate and Culture Committee. Um, and we learned a lot. And I just wanted to piggyback on what um, Lily Owen just said. That data um, was eye-opening for all of us. Um, and without that data, without getting the survey information from the students who participated in those surveys, um, we wouldn't have been able to make the recommendations we did to the board. And we wouldn't understand as much what the needs are of our students. We hear a lot of um, stories, and but when you, as we know, when you have data to drive your decision-making, it's very, very important. So I just wanted to highlight how important those uh, survey answers were for us and that students felt safe to even take it. So thank you. Thank you. We will now take comment for the presentation on equity and social justice. I have one slip, it's for Ms. Lynn Villarreal. If there's anyone else who would like to speak on that committee presentation, you may line up behind Ms. Villarreal. Thank you. First off, I have to comment on what Lily shared and it's truly eye-opening and heartbreaking to hear that about our students. And I'm so happy that we're, looking at and addressing these issues so that our students can feel safe and be at a place where they're free to learn. Um, that having been said, I'd like to say that as one of the founding members of the Equity and Social Justice Committee, I want to express how pleased I was to help develop the report and presentation that was made here tonight. Um, my involvement in this group was very challenging, I will say, yet it was extremely rewarding, an extremely rewarding experience for me. I had no idea at the inception of this committee how truly monumental this work was going to be. I realized that tonight was just informational and you're not taking any action, but I wish to acknowledge that this is by no means a perfect or even close to comprehensive plan 
or framework that um, an equity framework deserves uh, the support and the commitment of this board. And I wish to thank you. And I also want to acknowledge our student who presented for us, who has been just an excellent member of this committee. And um, so proud that we've been able to have a student voice in all these committees. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who wish to address the board on this committee? I do not have any slips for the last committee, um, but I'm opening up public comment for environmental literacy and sustainability presentation. Okay, seeing no one, no movement, I will move on. I want to again thank all the committees for your work. Um, this is what will help us be better as a community, um, as a school system, and as leaders. So thank you so much for your work. And, and it's not done. We're, we're, this is just a starting point, but thank you so much. The board, uh, if we, maybe we give you all one more round of applause. The board will now go into closed session. So are there is there any comment on any of the closed session items? I received no slips. Okay. In closed session, the board will discuss item one, C1, no, we're at D. D1, public employee discipline dismissal release. D2, conference with labor negotiators. Um, agency representatives, Dr. Waddell, Dr. Gonzalez, and Mark Scheel. Um, employee organizations, UTSC, CSEA, AFT, and management. D3, conference with legal counsel um, regarding two cases of anticipated litigation. And D4, conference with legal counsel pending litigation, litigation um, Caserta versus Santa Clara Unified School District. We anticipate the board will be in closed session for 75 minutes. We will resume open session at approximately 7.15. Um, for those of you who submitted slips to speak on unagendized items, that comment will occur at item H1. So that will probably be at about 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Thank you.
The board is back from closed session. We will now resume open session and we will start with the introduction of our interpreter. Good evening, board. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Verónica Adam. Angélica Benitas y yo seremos los intérpretes en español de esta noche. Bienvenidos a la reunión de la mesa directiva. Esta reunión está siendo transmitida por el canal en español de Zoom. Para escuchar esta sesión en español, oprima el botón que dice interpretación en la parte inferior de su pantalla y seleccione el idioma de español. En este menú también puede seleccionar la opción de silenciar el audio original en inglés. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will now give the report from closed session. For item B1, the board received information. For item B2, the board received information and gave direction. For item B3, the board received information and authorized the district to pursue legal action to protect the safety of schools, employees, and students. For item B4, the board received information. We will now have our report from our superintendent. Thank you, President Fairchild. Um, can, we continue to have exciting things happening in classrooms across our district. We have a renewed focus on English language arts and mathematics for all students and specifically supporting Latino, Latina, Latinx students and achieving at high levels. There is just an excitement and palpable energy and enthusiasm in classrooms across the district. And I'm so excited to see what we're going to accomplish this year. Our back to school nights have been in full swing, welcoming families back to a new year. Members of Expanded Cabinet and I have had the great good fortune to visit events across the district, and it's been a delight to see the energy and enthusiasm as children and families return to school. President Fairchild and I had the great good fortune to meet with our Student Senate on Monday afternoon with uh, PIO DeRico. We uh, thanks to student trustee Valdez and the student senate for their willingness to serve their voices representing the perspectives of our students and to share their plans for this area of focus with us this year. I look forward to working with them as our superintendent student council this year. Our labor management partnership has had a strong start to the year with our newly expanded labor management steering committee already hard at work supporting school sites and departments. We know that while we are on a journey of continuous improvement, the commitment to locking arms and walking this journey together makes us stronger and strengthens the work that we do in service of children and youth. I'm proud of our leading the way in this work in genuine and authentic ways and appreciative of the strong leadership and partnership of our labor and management partners. I would like to thank the many parents, staff, and community members who participated in the committees that we heard from this evening. I'm incredibly appreciative to all of them for their time, enthusiasm, and excellent ideas. These plans are living plans that will serve to guide and inform us in our work. We look forward to bringing additional committee reports in coming meetings, including a report sharing our strategic arts plan in September, as well as hearing from our LGBTQQIA plus committee. I was invited to share our strategic arts plan planning process tomorrow with a statewide community of practice around arts education and look forward to bragging about our work with districts across California. As I close, I'd like to comment on recent events. As you know, this week, um, I, President Fairchild, and the presidents of our labor partners, UTSC, CSEA, SCFT, and SCUMA, wrote a joint letter to our community to share information about a situation we've been addressing in the district. You may have also seen this in the news over the past week. As an outside organization has been distributing leaflets to families outside a number of our schools during morning drop-off. While we acknowledge and fully support the public's right to free speech, irrespective of the content of that speech, our concern has been with the behaviors that have impeded the safe arrival of students, families, and staff to school. The public's right to free speech is an essential component of our constitutional democracy, and we respect and deeply value that. At the same time, we are committed to protecting the safety and rights of our students, their families, and our employees to arrive at and attend school and work their workplaces in a safe and peaceful manner. As we've shared, and it's worth restating, we stand firm in our commitment to our shared values of inclusion, diversity, and equality, and equity, sorry, that bring us together rather than divide us. 
Together, our staff, family, students, and communities work to create school environments that celebrate each and every student, family, and staff member who walks through our doors, holding firm to the notion that our differences and our diversity make us stronger. We welcome everyone to the safe spaces that are SCUSD schools, spaces that encourage vigorous debate about ideas, but honor and respect all individuals. We celebrate the wonderful uniqueness of every child and learner in our district, whatever their race, their gender, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, LGBTQ plus status, religion, ability, language status, or zip code. I will reaffirm that we are here for each and every one of them and celebrate them for just who they are. We are proud to have a diverse and dynamic workforce to further that mission. And we, as we have shared, we are one Santa Clara, diverse, constantly improving, and stronger together. That concludes my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Waddell. Um, I read the wrong letters with my closed session readout, so I need to reread out. For item D1, the board received information. For item D2, the board received information and gave direction. For item D3, the board received information and authorized the district to pursue legal action to protect the safety of schools, employees, and students. And for item D4, the board received information. We will we will now have a student senate report from Giovanna Bierman, but I will turn the the mic over to our student trustee Luis Valdez. Thank you very much. I have the excellent pleasure of introducing Giovanna Bierman from McDonald High School to give today's student senate report. She's an excellent person to work with, and I have been working with her for a little bit now, and we are all looking forward to it. Um, hi, uh, it's really nice to be here with everyone. Um, before I start, I just want to say that uh, I'm super grateful that everyone's invited me here to share um, and update you all about my school, Kathy McDonald. Um, my name is Giovanna, and I am my school's um, student senator and ASB president. Um, okay, yeah. So, um, just what I'm gonna be talking about um, in this presentation are our school's past events so far this year, um, future plans um, that we have, as well as fundraisers, um, our goals, sports, and spirit. Um, so, so far, um, what we've done so far this year, as far as events is, we've had um, a welcome day where we got the opportunity um, to show incoming freshmen as well as uh, new sophomore students around campus and give them tours. Um, we also gave out class schedules and took yearbook photos. Um, just to highlight from my personal personal um, perspective and experience during this time, it was just so nice to see another class in our school, especially because we are the we were the only ones last year. Um, so what might have seemed like oh, that's all. The students that we have, it was like actually a lot to me and to a lot of other people. Um, so that was 100% an amazing highlight. Um, another, so because it's so early in the year, we haven't had a ton of events yet, but we do have one coming up tomorrow, um, which is the back to school social. Um, basically what the back to school social is, is like similar to a dance, but we don't really wanna give it that label yet because um, it's just like a back to school kind of get together. Um, basically the purpose of this is so we can raise a lot more money, especially because we don't have a ton yet, but we're working on that for sure. Um, another thing is just having icebreakers between the grades, both sophomore and freshman. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to continue this as the years go on, where we'll have four grades that can come to the back to school social. Um, and it's also just a really fun way to kick off the year um and just have a really fun start to an amazing school year um 
a past event that we just had actually yesterday was back to school night, uh, where we got the opportunity to show around parents because sometimes it's just important as important to show parents around as it is to show our students around. Um, we also gave parents the opportunities to meet our teachers and coaches, um, which was a super fun experience because our teachers are so amazing and as are our coaches. Um, and we also got the opportunity to sell um, school gear, such as like an example is the one I'm wearing right now, um, and also snacks, which was really successful. Um, another future goal that we have that I personally have been looking forward to, as well as a lot of um, other students in our leadership class and ASB uh, team um, is a multicultural spirit rally. Um, and basically what we want to do in this rally is like really just support and celebrate every student and staff member in our school, um, just because of how diverse and like amazing our, uh, camp our school campus and students are. Um, and we also hope to include both uh, Huerta Middle School and Agnew Elementary um, and just be able to celebrate all together with everyone. Um, and ways we could do this is we could um, celebrate and like showcase all the traditional dances, foods, games, uh, et cetera, that belong to people um, and their cultures. Uh, specifically, my friend Shirleya is a traditional Indian dancer and she's super good. And I've had the pleasure of dressing it on tape. So I can only imagine how amazing it is in person. Um, and I really want to be able to like help share that with everyone else um, and like be proud of that. Um, a future fundraiser that we're hoping to have is um, a movie night, hopefully more than one. Um, but basically, basically, it's just supposed to be like where we can fundraise a ton um, and strengthen the school uh, spirit and community. Um, in the past, we've done um, a Black History Night movie or <laughs> movie night. Uh, and basically, uh, the movie was called Hidden Figures, um, and it was a really fun experience just so um, we could celebrate that time together. Um, another future fundraiser we hope to have is fun runs. Um, to me, it's really easy to say that because I'm in cross country and I love running. To some, it may not be as exciting, but you could always walk, don't worry. Um, basically, it's also just meant to fundraise a ton um, because we can always use more fundraising. Um, and it's also really just a fun way to create an opportunity of exercise um, just for both our school and our community. So hopefully it'll be open to everyone. Um, and also just promoting school spirit because school spirit is always a good thing. Um, adding on to the uh, fun run, we could kind of piggyback off of that and do a health fair. Um, and hopefully we could do it like on a Saturday to make it a whole event and like a whole kind of day thing or morning thing, um, just so we could spread awareness such as issues on fentanyl and additional topics that um, are important to our district. Um, in addition to fentanyl, it could be like mental health, self-love, all that, um, exercise, that kind of thing. Um, and some activities that we could do are blood drives. Um, and then just to possibly smell snacks because again, <laughs> fundraising. Um, some ongoing goals that we have at Cafe McDonald is to always make sure that um, our school is a safe space for everybody, um, no matter what. So that includes like students, staff, um, teachers, like admin, everyone. Um, we also want to maintain constant communication throughout um, leadership, the student body, um, admin, all of that. Um, because as we, as we learned last year, communication is super important and um, just making sure we keep up with that. Um, we also wanna provide as many opportunities for students. Um, and when I, when I say opportunities, I mean like sports, clubs, um, and specifically one way we've, we've already accomplished this is um, we were able to, in the beginning of the year, there was a one club rule, um, which the student body had thought kind of limited our abilities to make memories and gain experience and all that. Um, so working with our amazing admin team, we were able to um, kind of open that up and allow students to join more than one club as they see fit. 
which is just um, really cool to like see the change that we kind of try to implement. Um, and then as always, of course, just try to celebrate everyone's diff differences and cultures. Um, some sports that are open during our fall season is cross country, which I'm in. So I have to promote that, of course. Um, volleyball, which some of my best friends are in. Tennis, which my sister is in. And football, which is just a really great sport. <laughs> um, both volleyball and football have uh, coming up games coming up. Tonight was actually vo girls volleyball um, first game. So go Condors. Uh, <laughs> And then I believe um, our football team has a game next week. So if you wanna come, you should definitely do that. Um, just because I have an amazing coach, I had to give him a shout out. Uh, <laughs> I'll definitely be sharing this with him, but uh, <laughs> this is Coach Garcia. Um, I just have to give a shout out to him because our school has like the best coaches and mentors that we could ask for. And we're so lucky to have coaches like him as well as coaches like Coach Codera and the other Coach Codera, um, lots of Coderas. And then we also uh, like, just to piggy off back off of that, um, our trainers are also very amazing. Um, but I just had to include a picture of him because like it's Coach Garcia, so. Um, this week we had our first spirit week of the year, um, basically, uh, on Monday, the 21st, um, was Adam Sandler day. That was 100% a very successful day because baggy, baggy attire is very popular at our school. Sometimes, um, I rocked sunglasses, a baseball cap and baggy shorts. So that was really comfortable. <laughs> I really liked it. Um, on Tuesday was favorite sports team day. I kind of doubled up again and wore this because condors. So, um, Wednesday was Barbie and Ken day. And although we didn't get a lot of Ken's, Barbie was very successful. Um, because I mean, Ken is just Ken, but it's okay. I still love Ken. <laughs> um, on Thursday, um, Today we had favorite actor and actress day. Um, even though it's not very traditional, I dressed up as Elmo because I loved Sesame Street and still do. Um, there was also a few Taylor Swifts. Um, there was a Tom Holland, there's quite a variety. And then tomorrow we have favorite musical artist day. So I will definitely be doing Taylor Swift, but like, you know. Um, that's it, but as always, go Condors. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would, I, I don't want to speak for other people, but it's always a highlight to hear from our students. So that was delightful. All right, we will now have our reports from our union presidents. Good luck following that one. I actually think I should start my report by asking to be moved before the student senators in the future, because that was amazing. <laughs> Applause to you. Uh, good evening, Dr. Riddell, President Fairchild Trustees and Ms. Burrell. I'd like to take the opportunity, oh, and I'm visiting Ms. Brown. I would like to take the opportunity to reiterate CSA's commitment with our educational partners to the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging for each student, staff, and family in Santa Clara Unified School District, not regardless of who they are, but because of who they are. We want everyone to benefit from all the opportunities and the advantages possible, and CSCA will do all that we can to help open those doors and provide the tools to access them. As we have started this new school year, it has been exciting and encouraging to meet with my association partners and management to delve deeper into our work to help set the course for our school district. Whether it is in my monthly meetings with principals, joint meetings with departments, 
the DLT steering committee or labor management partnership discussions, I feel a strong optimism and a deepening connection with my UTSC and AFT and SCUMA colleagues and district management as we develop and begin implementing our jointly held goal of providing the best possible education experience for all of our students. I am proud to announce, and there's the picture, you were ahead of me. I'm a proud to announce the recipient of the Chapter 350 August Spotlight Member of the Month, Melanie Caserza, Account Assistant 3 in Ed Options. Some of the comments made regarding this outstanding employee and involved CSA member are, she is a very helpful employee and is always willing to answer my questions. She's very bright with a dry sense of humor and I enjoy interacting with her. Melanie is dedicated and knowledgeable, detail-oriented, confident, independent, and a highly capable employee who dedicates time to ensure staff are informed of department procedures by creating tutorials, written explanations, and attend site supervisor meetings to provide support. Melanie is always willing to meet with staff to provide training and guidance. She is always willing to ask questions and contributes knowledge to the team. Melanie is not just a strong district employee, but a very strong union member as well. She is regularly seen at chapter meetings and is a strong part of our audit committee, which always slaps me on the hands and has volunteered to help out in many other ways. It is no surprise to anyone who knows Melanie that she was chosen to be recognized by her fellow chapter members. We are beginning negotiations, September 1st is our first meeting, um, around our new collective bargaining agreement, as I'm sure you're aware of, it's on the agenda tonight, our initial proposal. Since we are looking at the entire contract, it will not be a quick process and we will have much to discuss but I'm confident based upon my previous years as part of the negotiating team that we will reach an agreement that is beneficial to both parties and that will strengthen our district. A strong contract between CSA and the district will benefit just not our classified employees, but ultimately the diverse and unique students that we serve. I will have a very, very, very brief Giants report tonight. We still have a chance at a wild card spot. And I do want to shout out, and Bonnie will appreciate, a great debut by Paul DeYoung. This concludes my report. Good evening, President Fairchild, Dr. Waddell, Student Trustee Valdez, and the Boards of Trustees. I knew this school year would be a strength test for our partnership. We knew leaving last year, we would have some serious matters before us. I stand before you this evening to say our predictions have been proven to be correct. Our teachers are in the house tonight. We are here in solidarity with our parents and families. We are here supporting every student support that is unequivocal. We are committed to the hard work we know it will take to increase the support we provide our students, whether that support be academic, social, or emotional. Difficult situations and events provide us with an opportunity to pivot and look for ways to improve. There are many, many things going right in Santa Clara Unified, as we have heard here tonight. It was and continues to be a positive place to work. Our classrooms are bright and welcoming and our teachers are excited to be here. We have heard very positive words from parents and families since school began, from sharing the excitement for the new school year to an enormous turnout at our back to school nights. One of our teachers received an email from a parent who stated that her child never thought math was their favorite subject, but all the things they had done in class have made them really like math. Students are embracing the growth mindset and report all their mistakes are helping their brains grow. One of our teachers made arrangements to meet one of our students and families in the classroom before school began to help reduce their new student's anxiety about their new class. This student's parent was very appreciative stating, thank you for everything that you do. We are forever grateful to you. You are the best. Outside organizations do not know our students. We do. Outside groups don't know our families. We do. 
We will support our children because we know our children. Our connections to our families are strong in that strength, which will help us grow a, robo a robust community schools program in the coming years. As stated in my last board meeting report, years and years of research tells us that when families and the local community come together in our schools, students benefit. We are committed to that fact. I see an amazing opportunity before us right now, which will help us continue to grow our connections with our families and our community. We must take advantage of this opportunity. I'd like to take a moment to remind all departments in the district that actions speak louder than words. When teachers are treated poorly or dismissively, whether in public or behind closed doors, it damages the depth of our partnership. While we can talk all we want about partnership, the teachers must see it in action, in the loud and public times, but also in the small and quiet ones. It's time again to recommit to our partnership and a shared decision, a shared leadership model, because authentic partnership is not static. It grows, it changes, it evolves. We must keep in mind that as we grow our organization, new management must be supported and trained in the expectations we have for honest partnership. For those not used to this method of shared leadership, it may be quite a large paradigm shift. A one-sided commitment to the belief and value of the collaborative work is the opposite of partnership. We have before us an imperfect route and its path that must be kept going up so we can tackle the big work in front of our district. Yes, we are having growing pains right now, but I see that as a good thing. It means we're building a solid foundation of trust, allowing concerns to be brought to light without apprehension. We are a system living in a cycle of inquiry. In conclusion, I'd like to give a shout out to all of our preschool, pre-K and kindergarten teachers who teach our young students that biting is not an effective way to resolve conflict. Have a good evening. I feel guilty for laughing. <laughs>
You will have two minutes to speak. At the end of two minutes, please return to your seat. If you have additional comments, you may email the board. I will call the um, public speakers up three at a time. First, we have Claire Hood. Next, we have then Shannon Gutierrez and then Kelly Quayle. Is the microphone on? Okay. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much. <laughs> It looked green the whole time. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Claire Hood. I get to teach fourth grade at Ponderosa, and I also get to run the Rainbow Club um, with our third through fifth grade students. Um, I was going to try really hard not to say um, because I did that at back to school night so much that I was kind of embarrassed. So anyways, Rainbow Club members have asked I'm sorry, I was going to start with what Rainbow Club is. Rainbow Club is all about encouraging our students to become allies, to become advocates, to realize that the power that they have as individuals and the power that they have to change our community. Um, the kids really understand the weight of our goal that we're working towards, which is how to make a better world for our BIPOC community, our LGBTQIA plus community, our um, neurodiverse community, and our Santa Clara community as a whole. They um, have come up to me since the incident at Ponderosa, which is what they're calling it. And they've asked, what can we do? What can we do to make sure that people know that hate is not welcome at Ponderosa? And it's remarkable. I mean, they are third, fourth, and fifth graders, and they are ready to take on this fight. They, and I asked them, what do you think we should do? And a lot of them, some of the things they came up with was, we should print posters to hand out in our neighborhood, to put in their windows, to put in their yard, so that everyone knows not just at Ponderosa, but our whole community supports this work. And another thing that they brought up was every school in Santa Clara Unified should have a pride flag on their flagpole. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's it, you can, you can end it there. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Shannon Gutierrez. Hi, good. hello, good evening, everyone. Kind of weird to see myself up there. Okay, so I am Shannon Gutierrez. I am this first statement. I am representing the Lorewood PTA. Um, good evening, Santa Clara Unified Board members. My name is Shannon Gutierrez, and I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the Lorewood PTA. The mission of our Lorewood PTA has always been and continues to be focused on the positive impact of all children and families within our community. We support the actions of the Santa Clara Unified School District in its continuing efforts to create safe spaces for all parents and students and safe access to Santa Clara Unified Schools. Now I'm speaking as a parent. As you know, my name is Shannon Gutierrez. I'm a mother of a first grader at Laura Wood Elementary, and I wanna speak on the disgusting and terrifying acts that our children had to witness and experience last week. I am disappointed that this is a conversation that is needed. A hateful group that has organized agenda staged a protest at our elementary school. The children and parents were rightfully alarmed. As you know, last week, a mother and a member of the PTA was assaulted in the morning at drop-off. The group, which I will not give name to, was aggressive and put fear in our children that they didn't know they needed to have. Yelling at parents, staff, and children is a disgusting but useful means of spreading propaganda. I'm calling on our district to come up with a response and a plan for how to deal with this in the future. A few suggestions I have 
are reaching out to civil rights lawyers and implementing bystander training and de-escalation tactics for our staff that can also be available for our parents. Because you better believe that the group that showed up was ready, that was ready to cause chaos is well aware of their rights and pride themselves on using that knowledge to intimidate. I don't want to see this to happen to any of our staff and parents at the children in this district. Our children are afraid to get dropped off at school. They need to know that they are protected. Our teachers and staff, certified and uncertified, need to know that they are protected and that we have answers for them. Together, we can and will stand strong against Thank you anyone your, who wants to. Thank so. you for your comments. You have to know I hate cutting any of this off. Okay, but we have to follow the time limit. So Kelly Quayle and then uh, Maria Kinkin Gilbach. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Kelly Quayle and I'm a district TOSA as well as the parent of a second grader in Santa Clara Unified. Tonight, I'd like to speak primarily to our teachers who may want to be inclusive, but feel that the easiest thing in this political climate is to steer clear of topics such as anti-racism, Black Lives Matter, or LGBTQ plus folks. Beyond the fact that California law clearly supports and affirms your teaching of these topics, and that several studies demonstrate the value of inclusive curriculum for all students, there are other reasons why it's important that we as educators don't succumb to in intimidation tactics. For example, when it comes to Black Lives Matter, it helps to add some historical perspective. At the time of Martin Luther King Jr.'s death, 75% 75, 75 of white people disapproved of him, and 30% said he deserved to be killed. He's way more controversial than Black Lives Matter. Yet today, he is universally celebrated in our schools for his fight against racism. So if we stand on the right side of history for our students and our society, eventually everyone else will get on board even those people with the flyers. When it comes to LGBTQ plus folks, that's a little more personal. As I mentioned, I'm the parent of a second grader in our district. Last week, I found a paper in my son's bag where he was supposed to draw about things that were important to him, like his favorite foods. And I saw that he had crossed out the box about family. When I asked him, uh, when I asked him about it, he told me it was because he was afraid other kids would make fun of him because he has two moms. As a parent, this is heartbreaking. My question is, does another parent's fear outweigh my own son's right to feel safe to bring his whole self to school? And for the educators, who hesitate to read a book where Tommy has two moms because of that one parent who might complain, please know that most parents support you and that there are some students in your class for whom this book is going to have a profoundly positive impact. Thank you. Okay. Um, after Maria can can give a block. Oh, that's, a, that's a mouthful. You say, uh, we have Mary Clank and then Teresa Hernandez. My name is Kin Kin Brock, that's easier. I've got two topics. I want to appreciate what everyone in the school district is doing to support the students because we all know that, if you'll excuse the, I, the pronouns I use are meant to be inclusive, that when a student feels safe, when he feels listened to, and when he feels understood, he can learn. Reflecting on what we just heard about one particular student. Okay. The other topic is about state testing, which I hear is something that's been talked about. Whenever I speak to other parents, I speak strongly in favor of state testing and gathering data. Such information can lead to knowledge and knowledge can lead to wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Clink. We on? Okay, good. All right. Good evening, Santa Clara Unified Board Trustees and Superintendent. My name is Mary Clink, and I am speaking to you today on behalf of the Santa Clara Unified Council of PTAs. The mission of our PTA has always been and will continue to be 
focused on the positive impact of all children families within our community. We support the actions of the Santa Clara Unified School District in its continuing efforts to create safe spaces for all parents and students and their safe access to our schools. Thank you very much. Teresa Hernandez and then Ian Jackson. I don't have to touch anything on the mic. Is that again? Okay. My, my name is Teresa Hernandez. I'm a teacher at George Main Elementary School. I've been an employee in the district since 2001. And um, the sign I brought is our public schools, it says our public schools are the heart of our community. And I made a little bit of a change. I put our public school secretaries are the heart of our community. And um, I want to say that um, we have a secretary at George Main Elementary School. Her name is Mona Mitchell. She has been there more than 25 years. She started with her children there at George Main School. Um, Jim Canova's children attended George Main School. Then Mona became a parent volunteer. And then she was very active in PTA, PTA president eventually became an employee in the district and she was attendance clerk and now she is our secretary. She's been there decades. And if anybody has the heart, the mindset and all these core values is Mona Mitchell. Her last day as our secretary will be in September 8th and we will say goodbye to her on September 15th. But I want to say that Mona Mitchell, the secretary at George Main, she is the first person that welcomed you in the door. She helps every parent who comes in. She helps every staff member classified, certificated. She saw my own children grow up. I saw her children grow up. We have, I'm teaching students now that that are the children of my former students. Even I worked two years at New Valley and I see Joel, he used to be my student. So Santa Clara has a lot of people who value our community spirit and we love Mona Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Ian Jackson and then Donna Hamani. I said that wrong. Good evening, Dr. Waddell, Ms. Brown, Ms. Burrell, Board of Trustees and Santa Clara Community. My name is Ian Jackson, and I'm an English teacher at Wilcox High School and the UTSC Vice President. With some of the goings on in the district this week uh, and forced on us by outside entities, I'd like to talk a little on equity and inclusion. I spent some time last year working with the District Equity and Social Justice Committee on the equity framework that was presented tonight. And I want to say that it was an absolute pleasure working with such a diverse, intelligent, thoughtful, and compassionate group of people, all pulling together in the same direction on such important work. I am thankful that I work for a school district that wants to be self-reflective and consider how it can do better to support every child. Every child in Santa Clara Unified School District deserves the best. Children should not be marginalized because of their skin color, race, religion, socioeconomic status, gender identity, sexual orientation, or any other factor that people may use to separate us and define them. All children deserve to see themselves represented in the curriculum and education they receive and to hear about the history, struggles, and victories of their heroes and people they identify with. School is absolutely the place to learn how many groups in American society have been marginalized through systems of oppression that have led to a subversion of their place in society. I am proud that I get to teach books, books that might be banned in less enlightened places that have relevant cultural themes and protagonists who represent people of different creeds, colors, and sexual orientation. Because when students read about characters like themselves, they feel seen in an educational setting that has been blind to them in the past. This is not indoctrination, as some may claim, but a celebration of the wonderful differences we all possess 
that each make individual that make each individual unique. Thank, Thank you. you. Donna and then Sarah Hackett. Okay, good evening, board members and um, district staff. Schools and teachers these days are accused of many things that I don't recognize. So I'm here to do a little bit of sharing um, that civic education and high academic achievement are alive and well at George Main Elementary School. Last year at Open House, as part of our Leaders of Justice Unit, first graders wrote letters to their elected officials about issues that concern them. Just a few days ago, this future voter, uh, this future voter in the received a letter back from the President of the United States and learned how powerful her voice can be. Teachers know that she needs to grow up knowing that every person and every voice matters. Teachers also know that the power of her voice depends upon having strong academic skills to express herself. Last year at Maine, a Title I school in Alviso, 95% of first graders met or exceeded the text level benchmark on the FNP literacy assessment. 71% also met or exceeded expectations on the iReady computerized assessment. Teachers teach because we know that change in our classrooms leads to change in the world. Thank you. Sarah and then Krista Woodward. My name is Sarah Hackett and I am a first grade teacher at Montague Elementary School. I wanted to speak today primarily to convey my gratitude. I am so proud to teach in Santa Clara because ours is a district that cares about creating safe and welcoming spaces for all students. All of our students and families deserve to be welcomed, represented, and supported. In our recent district communications, our values of equity and inclusion have consistently been stated over and over and over. And again, by Dr. Waddell tonight, it has been a comfort as well as an inspiration to me and I know I'm in a place that cares deeply for all children. In particular, I also appreciate the work that's been done over the last couple of years by um, various district committees, some of which we heard, of tonight, heard from tonight, as well as the LGBTQIA plus committee. And um, I was especially touched by what Kelly said, and I tonight and I had the pleasure of working with her on the equity um, toolkit, equitable practices toolkit. And my hope is that that toolkit will further support teachers in um, having the courage and whatever support they feel like they need to um, engage in inclusive curriculum with their students and also support administrators in supporting their teachers in implementing that curriculum. Uh, we know that we still have a lot of work to do, but our district is moving in the right direction and it's the direction that aligns with my conscience and I feel so proud and lucky to get to be a part of it. Krista and then Katie Peterson. Hi, I'm Krista Woodward. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm a teacher at Wilson High School. I'm the chair of our Equity and Human Rights Committee for um, UTSC. Um, in order to ensure that our district site administration and teachers are clear on the expectations and limitations of what is learned in schools, um, a group of us, a subgroup of us um, in the district um, dug a little deeper into ed code and SUS board policies so we as a staff could better understand things and help support our colleagues. And so um, Sarah just mentioned the um, equity and inclusion toolkit. Um, and I want to, um, I'm getting off task here for a second, but we have um, a, um, a section of this um, as a resource for you sitting outside on a table that we'd love for you to grab. It is meant for the community members and we put it together and it's part of the toolkit that is for all staff in our district. And so I'm gonna give you a couple of excerpts from it um, that really applies to what's going on right now in our district. Um, so one thing, 
There is no statutory process by which families may opt out of curriculum that refers to gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. The opt-out provision of the California Healthy Youth Act applies to all or part of comprehensive sexual health and HIV prevention education. The opt-out provision does not apply to instruction or materials that may reference gender, gender, ident gender identity, sexual orientation, discrimination, bullying, relationships, or family. There's more in the handout I told you about and also in the toolkit for our staff members. Um, I have 20 seconds. I'm gonna say this, there's more, but um, our SUSD families and community are made up of many colors, cultures, and belief systems. It's important that we at each school site at the district level, all of us, we work together to better understand perspectives and also navigate and uphold our ed code board, board policies and core values of vision 2035. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Good evening, um, President Fairchild, uh, Superintendent Waddell, and esteemed board. Um, my name is Katie Peterson. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am a school psychologist within the district at Heyman Elementary School. Um, I also serve on the district's LGBTQQIA plus committee, um, and I wouldn't be a school psychologist if I wasn't here to talk about mental health and data. So um, I wanted to lift up some additional statistics to build off of something that Lily Owen brought up earlier in the evening. Um, that were found from the most recent national survey on LGBTQ youth mental health by the Trevor Project. LGBTQ youth who felt high social support from their family reported attempting suicide at less than half the rate of those who felt low or moderate social support. LGBTQ youth who live in a community that is accepting of LGBTQ people reported significantly lower rates of attempting suicide than those who do not. LGBTQ youth who found their school to be LGBTQ affirming reported lower rates of suicide attempts. This is why this work is so important. We have a responsibility to be the people in a child's life who are affirming and accepting of who they are. I want to thank the board and the school staff for continuing to prioritize and center this work as we move forward with the school year. And I wanna give a special shout out to the students who served on the LGBTQQIA plus committee and used their voice to be a shining light as we move toward the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you are not required to turn in a slip to speak. Is there anyone in the room who would like to speak? And then we will go out um, to the Zoom after we close public comment in the room to see if there's anyone with their hands raised in the Zoom. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Susanna. I'm a parent of students at Santa Clara Unified School District. The events taking place since the first day of school have been very upsetting. People claiming best interest of our children were harassing families and making them feel unsafe. I am proud of the community response via appropriate channels, like reaching out to this board, to the district, and to the police. The people in our community who are directly involved in students' lives on a daily basis came together to help each other. If there are concerns, I encourage appropriate discussions, but please keep the school areas clear and safe. I look forward to working with the board, the district, and this community to create solutions to this problem for the future. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to close public comment in the room. We will now go out to the Zoom for public comment if there are any hands raised. There are no hands raised. Trustee Lee, will you raise your hand? Yeah, I know. We... Um, I know that we can't directly speak to to commenters, but if there is a link or some some website for the equity toolkit, I would love to receive that so I can look at it as well. Thank you. I think to send that to the entire board. Do we have a mass email for Santa Clara? 
Um, we will now go on to our consent items, human resources. Do I have a motion to approve? Rotterman. I have a motion from Trustee second. Rotterman and a second from Trustee Lieberman. As we, as Trustee Muirhead is on the Zoom, we will be doing a roll call vote. Trustee Canova? Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Lieberman? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes, that passes seven to zero. We'll now do consent items on other consent items. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Rotterman. Second. We have a motion from Trustee Rotterman and a second from Trustee Lieberman. Trustee Canova? Trustee Gonzalez? Trustee Lieberman? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Trustee yes. Muirhead? Yes, yes. Trustee Rotterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes, Trustee Valdez? Yes. So that poses that passes seven to zero with Trustee Valdez also voting yes. We now have um, two action items under board governance. Um, again, to remind the board in order, we have to, according to board policy, we have to pre-approve any board travel and two more um, opportunities came up for the board for item, K1, it's board member travel for the National School Boards Association 2024 Equity Symposium and 2024 Advocacy in Institute. Do I have a motion, motion to approve? Motion to approve, Rodderman. We have a motion and a second. We have a trustee for a uh, question from Trustee Ryan. Yeah, the only thing I wanted to raise is that I believe this takes, I looked at the information, I believe this takes place uh, during when we would have our board meeting that week. So we just need to be mindful of whether we will have enough, I, I don't know how many trustees are interested in going. I, I don't know that I would be able to, um, but if there were four of us that were going to be at this or some similar event, we wouldn't have a quorum within Santa Clara. So we just need to be mindful of that. We may need to change the meeting if too many people go. Okay, any other questions? All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. Trustee Canova. Trustee Gonzalez? Trustee Lieberman? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes. Trust student Trustee Valdez? Yes. So that passes seven to zero with student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. The next one is board member travel for the California School Boards Association and Association of California Administrator 2024 Coast to Coast Federal Advocacy. Um, do you have a motion? Motion to approve, Ratterman. We have a motion and a second. I need questions or discussion. Okay, Trustee Canova, yeah. Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman. Yes. Trustee Muirhead. Yes. Trustee Raderman. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. And I vote yes. And student Trustee Valdez. Yes. That passes seven to zero with student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Now we have action items from the superintendent's office. We have three resolutions. Uh, resolution 2348, affirming September as Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Motion uh, to approve, Rotterman. We have a motion and a second. But I did have something I wanted to say. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Trustee Rotterman. Yeah, so I, I'm going to, on all three of these upcoming resolutions, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to support them. Our board resolutions, especially the ones, those that I think are affirming social issues, are an important opportunity uh, for us to provide focus and clarity uh, on the position of the board and the district. Um, but these verbal affirm while these verbal affirmations are important, I think we're missing an opportunity to add positive actions to the to these affirmations. Um, I would like to see, I would like to suggest that we take a look at a system to allow uh, the board to have some input in the resolutions before they come to us so that we can take a look to see if there's any positive actions we can add to the resolution to so that we have the opportunity to do more than just say we want to prevent suicide that we can add if there's something that's missing also that would give us an opportunity to maybe get some public input into it and say you know these are some things that we need to need to be pay attention to so um with having said that uh, that's something for the future and maybe we can put something into either board policy or we can come up with something independently or put an agenda item for that but i'd really like to see us i've, I've fought this battle for quite a while now about having positive actions associated with uh, positive intent so thank you 
Um, thank you, Trustee Ratterman. I do believe that the way that the board is able to make those positive um, actions is through our board policies, and we get to approve those and put those into place. Um, I would hesitate on adding a action items um, to our staff um, separate from what we are uh, we authorize through our board policies um, three at a time every month. So we can have a discussion at another time, but let's vote on this. Uh, Trustee Canova, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman, Trustee Muirhead. Yes. Trustee Ratterman, Trustee Ryan. Yes. And I vote yes. Student Trustee Valdez. Yes. So that passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. We have resolution L2 2349 affirming September as Attendance Awareness Month. Motion to approve, Ratterman. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Trustee Canova. Yeah. Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman, Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman, Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes, Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. That passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. L3, Resolution 2350, affirming September as National Hispanic Heritage Month. Motion to approve, Ratterman. We have a motion and a second, Trustee Canova, yes. Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. I vote yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. Uh, and so that passes seven to zero. Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. We now have action items for human resources. Action item number one, M1, 2023 2024, Santa Clara Unified School District substitute teacher and substitute administrator salary schedules. Motion to approve. Ratterman? We have a motion and a second. Are there any comments or questions? Seeing none, let's have a vote. Trustee Canova, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman, Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero. Uh, action item in two, new job descriptions for nutrition services. Motion to approve, Ratterman. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Okay. Trustee Canova, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman, yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes seven to zero. Action item M3, California School Employees Association, CSEA, Chapter 350, Initial Proposal for Successor Agreement Negotiations. Motion to accept the proposal. Mr. Ratterman. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Trustee Canova. Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Lieberman? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes, that passes seven to zero. Action item M4, Santa Clara Unified School District initial proposal for successor agreement negotiations with California School Employees Association, CSEA chapter 350. Except initial proposal. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Trustee Canova, Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman? Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. And I vote yes, that passes uh, seven to zero. Now we have business action items in one, resolution 2337, authoring change order to the contract with Redwood Electric Group Incorporated for additional work at Kathleen McDonald High School. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or? I almost want to ask questions just because Larry sat through this entire thing, but other than that, no. No, okay. So, uh, Trustee Canova, yes. Trustee Gonzalez, Trustee Lieberman, yes. Trustee Muirhead, yes, Trustee Ratterman, Trustee Ryan, yes. I vote yes. Student Trustee Valdez, yes. So that passes seven to zero with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Action item N.2 consider the request from Emika Ventures for a waiver and maintenance fees. How about we have a little discussion on that one? Sure. So Amica Ventures LLC is a for-profit company. <clears throat> they provide a after-school classes to students in regards to young engineers and uh, do Lego brick challenges. Uh, the, as I said, this is a for-profit company. Uh, they currently operate on many of our campuses, including Ponderosa, Millican, Sutter's, Bowers, and Brawley. 
There are anywhere between five and 15 students in each one of the classes. Um, they charge between $25 to $30 per class for up to 14 sessions per class. And they're requesting a waiver of the fees for the first semester of the maintenance fees that would equal approximately $4,300. Trustee Ratterman. Just a real quick clarification. That's $25 to $30 per class or 25, per? 25 to $30 per class, 14 classes per session, five to 15 students per class. Okay. Per they, session. Do they give any extraordinary reason why they, for for profit company, should get relief? I mean, I don't Anybody see gets. any. That's why I'm asking. I would like to request that you please waive these charges as it's too high for each class considering the enrollment. Okay. I make a motion to deny the request. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Jim. I mean, oh, no. Okay. Trustee Canova. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Lieberman. Yes. Trustee Muirhead? Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. I vote yes. Student Trustee Valdez? Yes. So that passes six to one with Student Trustee Valdez also voting yes. Okay. Wow, it's earlier than I thought it would be. We now are to our items from the board. We will start um, with Trustee Rat Ratterman. Um, to give a report on anything you would like to report on, I guess, relating to your position as a board member. I, you know, I don't have anything specific, but I will tell you that the outpouring that we saw today of our people pulling together against a what was a perceived threat to our children was very uplifting, uh, something that I really appreciated. Um, and it's been a busy time, and I've just come back from Switzerland, so I'm feeling really, really happy. Uh, so other than that, uh, I'm going to, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. Um, I was going to say, I just want to ditto what Trustee Radman said, but also, uh, I think in the past, people were talking about tolerance. And I know that here in Santa Clara, but we embrace, we totally, uh, you know, appreciate the diversity that we have within the district. and. I think it's something that that uh, I've always loved that the district uh, really is uh, is is a uh, is a welcoming place and uh, I would say safe for everybody and whatever we we work to do in collaboration with our, our different uh, partners you know associations and everybody I think it's just a really positive place to be at and um, it's unfortunate that people sometimes try to uh, to uh, intimidate others but. You know, we're going to stand strong and, and do what we need to do to support our students, staff, and community as we uh, do our efforts. Um, the only other thing I was going to mention is Metro Ed had an open house for CSBA um, folks to come by last Friday, and they got to view the uh, the site and experience the uh, the vastness that, that Metro Ed does offer. And um, there was some, uh, as, as CSBA looks to... Uh, advocate for different districts. There was some, some you know, the, the wheels were, were moving as far as how they can help in certain aspects. It, there's different things that happen in, in Sacramento that are not always positive as far as how that happens, but there's definitely de definitely uh, a lot of uh, knowledge in, in our lobbying and advocacy that CSBA does to help Metro Ed. So uh, just wanna mention that and got to go to Central Park yesterday and uh, I guess a couple of days ago and uh, go to their uh, practice one night. Thank you. Trustee Ryan. Yeah, I'll just echo the the um, things Trustee Rotterman and, and Gonzalez have said about seeing our community come together. Um, it's, you know, disturbing the things that have been happening. Um, and I'm glad to see that we as a district seem to be very united in, in wanting to uh, do the best for our students. So really grateful for that. Thanks. Trustee Canova. Yes, uh, I did. I just want, when something like this happens, uh, you know, you're just so proud of our community. And I think we all, we all know how special Santa Clara Unified is. It really is a, a very special place. But just to see how everyone responded is just um, very inspiring. 
And then I just kind of borrowing from the Metro Ed story. So we've talked about AB 377 going through successfully both sides of the legislature without opposition, which is incredible, all kinds of co-authors, all the way to the governor's office. And the Department of Finance told the author of the legislation to, to basically gut it if it were to pass. That's Al Marasucci. And so his decision, I just got an email two days ago, his decision was to not do that. It's gone into the suspense file, and it will hopefully return to be continued in the next legislative cycle. But um, it just shows you how difficult our process is in this state. You can win both sides of the legislature with no opposition. But if the Department of Finance has the governor's ear, and they do, um, you hit a wall. And so it's back to the drawing board. But um, it's sad, but the fight continues. Trustee Lieberman. Thank you, President Fairchild. Um, I, I'll echo everyone and not repeat it. Um, but, um, you know, Laurelwood is my home school. And so um, seeing what happened there Friday was um, was especially upsetting um, because I know all of those people and I know the teachers that were verbally abused by the group. and. Um, no one deserves to to go to school or go to work and and be assaulted. And um, one of my friends there texted me in the afternoon that her kids were afraid to go home because they didn't want to go to the gate because they were afraid that those people would be there. And it it just it just broke me. And I I want us and and, and that is why tonight is so heartening for me because it's we're all together in opposing this hate and we it's hard because we think we live in California and we live in this bubble and this stuff happens in other states but it's here and now we have to deal with it and I just want to tell our our kids and our staff that this is a safe place and we're going to do what we have to do to keep you safe and to make sure that you're, you don't feel scared to go to school and that you don't feel scared to go home because there might be people there that are going to hurt you. And um, I'm just very grateful that we have a district leadership in Dr. Waddell and cabinet um, that is supportive of, of uh, inclusivity and diversity and the, the work that needs to happen to support that. Um, I'm proud to be part of this district and I hope that we can come, come together for our kids. Thank you. Trustee Muirhead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll agree with, um, the comments that have been made tonight from other board members about how proud I am of how our district, um, came together, both our administration and staff and our parent community um, <clears throat> really showed who they were um, and coming together and um, and working together. And I really appreciate that. And then um, I wanted to add that I'm really proud of my three kids who graduated from Santa Clara Unified. I launched my third one off to college this past weekend. And it was really gratifying to see her start this next part of her journey, her life journey. And um, I came back with COVID, so that part wasn't fun. But just seeing how confident that she um, was in taking this next step um, makes me really proud of where she's been and coming through our district. Thank you, Student Trustee Valdez. Thank you very much. In echoing what everyone has already said, I think that it is absolutely beautiful that the community can come together in the face of a perceived threat. And just seeing all the faces that were here tonight was quite an excellent sight. And I'm very happy for this community here. On switching lanes, yesterday, I actually had my first CSBA board member training where I was able to interact and talk with some of my peers from all across the state who are taking on this position as well. It did go well. And I have other 
board member meetings coming up for training. I have three more coming up for this year, and I will be attending some of the other optional ones as well. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank everyone who came out today um, to stand with their colleagues and their community um, to send a message about what we believe in Santa Clara Unified. It's one thing to send out an email and make a statements, but it's another thing to have people come on a after work to a board meeting and say no. And so I appreciate those who came in person to support our students and our colleagues who felt very threatened um, this these past few weeks, I I feel like I need to apologize to I anyone on behalf of the, the world that does this. I don't know how to say this apology correctly. That they had to fear feel an increase of fear or rejection or hate in their protective bubble of Santa Clara. We're not used to that. We're not used to feeling that. And I apologize to the people that felt it more intensely because they identify with any of the groups that were targeted. It's not okay. It's not okay. And you are welcome. You are wanted. And we celebrate you because you are part of our family. And that needs to be clear to our children and to our staff, to our administrators, to anyone, our parents. You are welcome and you are wanted and you are celebrated. And with that, I close this meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? To adjourn, Rotterman. I have a motion and a second, and we get our do our last roll call vote. Trustee Canova. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Lieberman. Yeah. Trustee Muirhead. See you next time in person. Yes. Trustee Ratterman? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. I say yes and student Trustee Valdez? Yes. Yes. And we are adjourned at 8.55. <laughs>